whistling, you disgusting Scotch peasant! Duke of Dunstable. Appalling man. The first name begins with A. He's staying here with his niece. I can't remember her name. Of Clarence! No, that's my name. Oh, oh. Uh, Have you seen Linda? Linda! Alaric wants her. Alaric. Oh, please, Clarence. I mean, if he doesn't find the girl, he's going to start smacking things up with a poker. You! Are you Scotch? Ye crane your blards, you old twist, ye clumping trun. Ruddy fellow turns up uninvited, trailing nieces, stays a week spreading this temper. His own place is vastly bigger than Blanick, but why does he stay there for a change? Bellowing about like a mastodon with a hernia. And what's it for? Uh... Linda. Precisely. What's she done to deserve to be dragged here? Clarence, there is sufficient imbecility in this world without you contributing to it by speaking. Mm. For the last time! Have you seen Linda? Oh, God! You shall not marry that creeping postule, Pongo Twizzleton. What kind of an imbecile allows himself to be called Pongo anywhere? An imbecile who looks at my ward and says to himself, toot toot, gravy train, here comes Uncle Alaric's cash. I think not. And when you find my ruddy niece, you just tell her that. Very good, Your Grace. Will that be all? No. Where's Emsworth? Don't tell me cavorting with that ruddy pig again. The man's potty! Linda! Has he gone, Beach? He has, miss. Linda! Did he have a poker? He has a tendency to pokers. He used one to demolish the drawing room of his own house because he could hear Pongo whistling the bonny bonny banks of Loch Lomond. He hates Scotland, you see. He really hates whistling. And above all, he hates Pongo. He's a great hater, Uncle Alaric. Yes, miss. Linda! Linda! Morning, Duke! Festering fistula! Linda! It's a usual deplorable business. A girl, one was discussing earlier, has to be kept away from a young man. Why? I've no idea. Oh, yes, because he's poor. I, I say, that, that's ridiculous. What does it matter? I mean, suppose you won the derby, and all of a sudden... Are you addressing your peak? Uh, ah, Dunstable. Eh? No, I was soliloquizing. I heard you inciting that animal to run a runny derby. Good God, Ellsworth. You can't put your shirt on a pig to win a horse race. Why should the Empress wish to wear my shirt? The Empress? Stone the crows. Now the man's hallucinating royalty. Uh, Dunstable, you are in the presence of the Empress of Blandy. Emsworth, that is a pig. Ah, my dear fellow, you fail to see what I see. Now, look here. I came for a rational conversation about Linda. Linda! That's the girl I was talking about. Yes, uh, go on. Right. That's it. I'm taking the animal off your hands. What? When I leave, that pig comes with me. If necessary, in slices. Oh, hello, Beach. Where's Bloody Linda? Bloody Linda? The Honourable Miss Gilpin, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Isn't she uh, Pongo Twistleton's bit of squeeze? I believe the two young persons are engaged, but the match does not meet with the approval of his grace. Oh, well, yeah, no surprise. Frightful thug. Has he smashed much? I have removed most breakable items from his usual routes about the house. Oh, good man. Oh, and, uh, well, better move that. Rather valuable. Linda! Linda! Where are you, my dear? Linda! of Emsworth. It's gone too far. He wants to put a bundle on his pig to win the runny derby. What? He needs to see a loony doctor, Collie. And fast. There's only one man for this sort of crisis. Eric, do you speak figuratively when you say my brother wishes to enter his pig for Epsom? I do not. I think he thinks because he's a flat the animal stands a chance. 
no need to rush. Wait there. Ah, here's the blighter. Name's Roderick Glossop. Uh, is he discreet? No, I've never met the man. I tried on a mix with doctors, bunch of bloat eaters, most of them, but he had the entire Welsh branch of my family committed, so he does the job. Thank you. You, get me a dozen eggs. Uh, certainly, Your Grace. How would you like them done? I don't want eating eggs, you idiot. I want throwing eggs. I wish to assault that bloody whistling Scotsman. <laughs> What are you doing? Good heavens. I've been from Dunstable. What are you doing? I was looking for you. Oh, I'm glad to find you. Do you know he plans to confiscate the Empress in slices? He says you're going to enter her for the Derby. Connie, you appear to forget that the Empress is a pig. It is not her custom to gallop around in Dunstable and man's a lunatic. I say, uh, are you all right? It's my pongo. Oh, dear. Has it sustained an injury? <laughs> uh, ah, Beach! What is it that requires my urgent attention? A telegram for her ladyship. Oh, oh I'll take it. Uh, I'm on my way to touch her for a few quid. A hundred of them, in fact. Yes, fortune was a bit outrageous on the slings and arrows front at the pink pussy. <laughs> oh, hello, old Prue. How's life? <laughs> so I gathered. Sir Roderick Glossop regrets that he is unavoidably detained. Oh, that is a shame. Who is a... Oh, everyone's heard of Glossop. Uh, Beach? Sir Roderick is London's premier nerve specialist, sir. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Loony doctor. Uh, oh, what does he want here? Uh, is the Duke's intention that your father should be committed, sir? He persuaded her ladyship to summon the gentleman. Uh, wait, 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 Governor, Governor, you, uh, you ever had, uh, dealings with Pongo Twistleton? Is that a firm of solicitors? Ah. I bet Aunt C hasn't either. Ah. Excellent. The course of true love, just for once, is going to run tricklingly. Oh, sadly, this telegram failed to arrive. But Glossop shall. Yes, yes, never better. Though I may be slightly drunk. So why? I've been drinking. Ah, look at my hand. You're yeah, steady as a rock. Yes, but I can see three of them. Um, Problem is, Freddy, I'm a physical and moral coward. No, no, look, pond, pond, pond. All you have to do is pronounce the governor fit for human consumption, eh? And then he'll square up to Dunstable and demand blessings of your linkage to listen, Linda. Backbone, Pongo. Give me some gas. Sir Roderick! Oh, good Lord, it's my aunt. Dear lady. Oh, good heavens. Oh, thank you for coming so promptly. Promptitude is my middle name. Actually, it's Ambrose. Call me Rosie. Leave me to the nutter. Yes, yes. Nutter? Oh, a uh, technical term. The Earl of Emsworth. Is he? Or does he merely believe he is? No, he is the Earl of Emsworth. And although undoubtedly he is eccentric, I'm not at all sure he's mentally unstable. You seem awfully young, Sir Roderick. Oh, oh yes, as, as a child, he uh, diagnosed his little sister with adenoid fits of screamia. May I be candid? You are here at the instigation of the Duke of Dunstable. He wishes you to examine my brother. I wish you to examine the Duke. <laughs> oh, my dear. I'm so concerned about your safety. I can't be here with you all the time, you see, to protect you. Oh. Ah! McAllister! Angus! Very good. Mm. 
Dunstable? Glossop. Glossop? Dunstable. Hello. We met before, weren't at school together. I never thrashed you or anything. Uh, uh, Duke, Sir Roderick is about 400 years younger than you. You'll be surprised the people I've thrashed. <laughs> Don't giggle like a ruddy female! To indicate something amusing has been said, laugh like a man. Mm -ha. If it's excessively amusing, mm -ha. Listen, Blossom, do this right and I'll see you rewarded. Sir Roderick does not seem entirely composed. Oh, no, it's a professional strategy. Uh, the patient is lured to decant his anguished soul. If there's anything I should have been told about this nerve specialist and wasn't, I shall drill a small hole in your skull and suck out your brains with a straw. <laughs> That's about as much time as it would take. on you. You! Stop that ruddy whistling! We seek Lord Emsworth. Ah, I just wished you big baboon. You are begging for an egging. Lord Emsworth set me here to get this bug again, I like to see you. Pig! Pottiness incarnate. When we find Emsworth, be trenchant in your judgment. We shall admire you for it. You would admire a man who was trenchant with Lord Emsworth? Immensely. I shall slap him on the back and dine him at my club. Back to the house! Shoo! What are your first impressions? I mean, all this business about eggs. Troubling. Very troubling. I am nowhere near drunk enough to cope with this. So you're doing swimmingly. Just, um, just try to stop touching my aunt. It, it uh, frightens me. Uh, I have taken measures, Beach, but I fear for the Empress's safety. My lord. May I speak frankly? My dear fellow, I trust you would never do otherwise. There is one on the premises of whom you must be wary. Damn right, Ruddy Dunstable! The instrument of Lord Dunstable. What? Like a trombone? Lord Emerson, you've got to help me! I really do believe that if Uncle Alaric says another foul word about Pongo, I will stick his poker through his black heart! Oh, good gracious. <laughs> Uh, come on. Emsworth, this is Glossop. Quite possibly thrashed him at school. One can't be sure one thrashed so many. Why is my niece hiding behind that stuffed goat? It's not a goat. It's an alpaca. <gasps> yeah, and she isn't. Clarice, are you actually insisting that Linda isn't hiding behind that creature? I am, Connie. And furthermore, I have it on good authority that there is a secret fraternity of brass instruments in the house working in concert for our excretion. What? When I say concert, I don't... The, the, what are you driveling about? Well, excretion isn't quite right either, but you entirely take my point. It's a conspiracy, Connie! Grossop, this is the time to be robust. Commit this loony and I shall see you properly rewarded. It is clear to me, Duke, that the patient suffers from a sublunary medulla oblongata diathesis. <laughs> a whole pile of it. So it's off to the funny farm. I would be delinquent not to send him thither. Bingo! Glossop, you twerp! I, I call that a highly caddish diagnosis. No, no, I can explain. What is Glossop? Emsworth, you'll be much happier in the long run. Now, why don't you go and have a pleasant lie down? I don't want a pleasant lie down. I'm going to my room. To stand up unpleasantly.
Alaric. What have I done? Ah, Emsworth will soon be settled in the giggle factory with a rug over his lap and a plate of pap. I'll hang around Blandings, make sure you don't make a female farce of running the dump, and if that penniless sewer Pongo Twistleton comes sniffing around Linda, I shall drag his pancreas out through his hat. <laughs> what I said was excessively amusing. I said I wanted eight. Oh, Beach. Indeed, Your Ladyship. Perhaps... Sir Roderick's professional attentions could be redirected. I, I did not bring you here to get the governor trusts and ships to a loony bin. And will you stop kissing that girl while I'm chastising you? I'm terribly sorry, Freddy, but it was suddenly clear to me that oiling up to Dunstable was the way forward. Freddy, please. Pongo is a lamb. Whatever he did, he did for love of me, which is awfully romantic. Well, well, I'm shocked, Pongo. Shocked. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Beach, come out here. Look at me being shocked. Forgive me, Mr. Three, but I was taking a stroll and I could not help. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, what, what are we to do? In the first instance, are you familiar with the popular melody, The Bonnie Bonnie Banks of Loch Lomond? Uh, what? You want me to sing it? No, sir. I should like you to whistle it. You know how to whistle, sir, don't you? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Of course, you, uh, you blow and then you put your lips together. Other way round, sir. Ah. Beach. Why am I going to bed? Is it bedtime? Shortly, my lord. I just came to warn you there may be some small commotion outside your window within the hour. Are the local people advancing on the castle with lighted torches and garden forks? No, my lord. Torches lighted, not the forks? No, my lord. Oh, good. Good night, uh, Beach. No need to lock the door, then. Uh, certainly not, my lord. I cannot imagine how it came to be locked in the first place. I'm coming. I hear you. Pam! What the hell do you want? Ah, finally. Will that be all, Your Grace? Ah, watch where you're going, you stupid bloody woman! <laughs> Now look here, Dunstable. I thrash you in your blood! Alaric! You're the ruddy vermin who needs a damn good hanging! What on earth is going on? Constable, desist! It is abundantly clear, Dunstable, that it is not Lord Emsworth who is cuckoo. It is you. 
Before witnesses, you have assaulted the love of my life. Eh? Uh, Miss Gilpin. I thought and you said we that. pay no heed, Dunstable, to what you think I might have said. Escort the Duke to his room and lock him in. In the morning, I shall telephone the Master of Lunacy. Miss Gilpin, come. Uh, oh, Connie, you've got a um, bit of something on your. Uh... down yet. Where is Linda? Uh, she hasn't come down either. Mr. Frederick, mm. the Duke wishes to see you, sir, in his room. Uh, right. Um, Beach. I have, sir, removed all the obvious weaponry. and step away from it. I need you, damn it. Yeah. Listen, Threepwood, there appears to have been some fatuous misunderstanding. I need you to make this clear to Glossop, eh? You know, it is completely impossible for me to help you in any way. I'll give you 500 pounds, damn and blast you. And yet I can but try. Is this? You're an imposter. Lady Constance? I am. But above all, I am a physical coward. Just ask yourself this, Aunt C. Is it really in your interest to expose him? Uh, let me explain the situation as clearly as I can. Day. Very pretty. Thought I might as well walk from the station. How wise you are. My name's Glossop. I'm afraid I'm a little late. I'm sure it doesn't matter. Who will you come to visit? The Earl of Emsworth. My dear fellow, I'm the Earl of Emsworth. I don't consider you'll be late at all. Come into the house. Dress yourself. You seem well, Lord Emsworth. Fit as a flea, Sir Roderick. How are you? I confess to being perplexed. Oh, I regret to hear that. I don't understand why I was so urgently summoned. It happens to me all the time. I call it having a sister. <laughs> Let's have a cup of tea. Come on. Sometimes, you know, this time of day is crumpy. You're a rich man now, Pongo. Oh, my darling, buzz me up to the Ritz and dance me stupid. Oh, Pongo, Pongo, how I love you. I say, Artsy, uh, how are you fixed? A uh, few quid to keep the wolf from the door? Uh, no. Eggs! Bring me eggs! Bring me You say you were summoned, Sir Roderick. By whom? The Duke of Dunstable. Oh. Is the Duke disposed to behaviour that is not entirely rational? 
Well, he lays about the place with a poker on a regular basis, if though here he comes now. Uh, if I were you, Sir Roderick, I'd be inclined to take cover. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm intrigued. <laughs> Sir Roderick Glossop, can you give me one reason not to issue you with a certificate of lunacy dispatching you to join the Welsh portion of your family confined at Merthyr Tydfil? Is there any demonstration of basic sanity you are prepared to make? Well, um, well, you could let your ward, uh, Miss Gilpin, marry the man that she loves. Uh, who, who, who is that, by the way? Uh, that one, the, 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 the pretty one. Uh, I mean, surely, Dunstable. Why obstruct the course of true love? That would be madness. <sighs> Uh, it will come uh, as no outstanding surprise to learn that I am going to my room. Oh, no, if you yeah. speak, Clarence, I will introduce eggs into your person in a manner you may mistakenly believe to be medically impossible. I don't think Alaric's entirely right in the head, poor fellow. Have a potato. Can you whistle? It's as I have this particular melody lodged in my head. <laughs> <laughs> 